Hi, I'm Shelby and welcome to my Pottery Studio vlog for October. So for October, I decided that I wanted to do a Halloween restock. I usually don't get pieces finished in time because I ideally have to have them finished at the start of October. So it's kind of weird because you've got to be like a month ahead of when any event is happening and you're kind of celebrating it way before anyone else is celebrating it. But I need to make sure that they go through the kiln in time, not only for the content to roll out during October, but so that they're finished at the start of the month so that they have time to travel to their new homes. For my US friends, I try and get things out a whole month before the actual event so that they have time to arrive and you can enjoy them in the lead up to the event. The Halloween restock actually took up a lot of time away from the finest keepers tally, but it was good. It was good. I, I just kind of feel guilty. Even though I'm still doing good business things and still selling my work, it feels like I'm taking it from some other cup for some reason. I think because I've got this whole goal with the tallies, but I have been neglecting my online friends that can't come to an in-person event. So I really wanted to make sure that I did an online restock. I always used to do online website replenishes. They were every month, but this year I kind of wanted to do something for myself and for my business. And that was to come and meet you in person and to do some in-person events. And that's just where I felt interested goal-wise this year. And I'm hoping that I can start doing some more online restocks again next year. At the last market, I took a bunch of pre-orders and now they're all finished and ready to send off. I've been sending a few of them off here and there as we've been making them. But this last lot, I had to do a lot more because we had a lot of pieces crack. So I had to remake a lot of the pre-orders and this always happens when I do pre-orders. Nothing ever cracks and then when I do something that's on a back order, and this is why I don't do them because it always just happens that way. But I'm going to pack those and then we're going to get back onto the tally and then it will almost be time for the Halloween release as well, which I'll then have to pack up and send off as well, depending on how many orders we get. A lot of people actually get really nervous in my comments that shipping is super expensive and that these pieces won't survive the travel. They will. They will, I promise, most of my pieces actually end up overseas. I use some really lovely compostable packing, including this bubble wrap that can go in your compost bin from Hero Packaging. I also get donated a lot of bubble wrap from other businesses to give it a second use. I use biodegradable packing peanuts, compostable satchels, and things that can be recycled. I do a squeeze, shake, and press test on everything to make sure the pottery will stay nice and cushioned for its whole journey. The shipping is actually not as expensive as you think it might be. As of 2023 and the prices, it's only $20. $20 Australian, which is about 13 US dollars at current conversion rates. All my prices on the website are in Australian dollars too, so it can be converted into US dollars to see what it actually is in your country. But that's just a little tip here. I thought I'd include it in the vlog this week. Uh, in case you're wondering, so for the Halloween restock, I had some mystery items and these actually ended up being the little pumpkin jars from an earlier mystery mold. I popped in some little chocolate treats. I don't usually do this, but it felt kind of like a trick or treaty thing to do. And they were little Australian animal chocolate chocolates. Once they were all packed up and dispatched, I got straight into doing my finest keepers prep. I usually have a break after a restock to just be like, ah, oh, that was great. I feel good. That was nice. I'm so happy that the artworks found new home kind of vibe. But this time I just had to get straight back into finest keepers prep. So I went through that list that I showed you at the start of this series of vlogs and I grabbed out all the pieces I needed for the cottage flower design and began to paint that. The cottage flowers are actually some of my favorites to create. This time I am changing it up a little bit from the last market. I want to make each market to be somewhat exclusive like each one has this classic staple but you can get a slight variation on that staple so some have different designs some market exclusive much similar to my online restocks where everyone is different in colors and patterns the vessels stay the same but the variation is vast like it's existentially what is my work but it always just changes because that's just to me it keeps it fresh it keeps my creativity buzzing and I get to try something new but I can also use the data from what was popular from previous markets and restocks to assess what worked well and evolve on it. But it also keeps you interested. It's also kind of like a bit of a business strategy is that it might make other people come back to another market to get a particular colorway to match another colorway that they got earlier on. It means no two pieces are the same. And you can also build upon collections and appeal to different aesthetics. There is just like so much pros and to 
actually doing the different designs. I just love it. It just keeps me stimulated always. The I, I think the only con is that sometimes I might not redo designs or you might not get something ever again. So it means it's very limited run, which means not everyone can get their hands on stuff. And I totally understand that. I guess I am only one person, but it does keep things fresh, fun, and exciting every single restock and market I do. <laughs> I just got this box. It is so heavy. I'm really excited. I wanna open it with you, but it is the key rings and pins I ordered to replenish the ones that sold out at Finders Keepers last time. But I also got some new designs that I haven't seen before. So, so let's open it and yeah, I'm seeing these for the first time too. So let's have a look. Oh my gosh, that exceeded ex Oh my gosh, oh my goodness. These are great. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. These look so, so nice. First one I've pulled out is a teapot, but this is inspired by the flower and gum teapot I did for the 100th mystery mold. So I did a little teapot motive with the flower and gums on it. And I did it like a yellow pin with like a green and pink with gold. And it's a hard enamel. And oh my goodness, it is, oh, that is so cute. Oh my gosh, it is so groovy. I have never seen anything quite like this. This is so cool. So I got these key rings and pins done based on the little illustrations I did for the 100th Mystery Mold t-shirt. So what I did was I just used those illustrations that I'd already done and sort of, I guess, like elevate them a little bit for these. But I did the mushroom butter dish, but I did it with like a gold outline. Oh my goodness. That is just so whimsical. It's just so cool seeing like things I've made into little key rings. Like I know it's a mystery mold, but just being able to see this in particular, like one of my flower and gum designs in a pin and this is a key ring. It's just so magical. Okay, okay, okay. we got the teacups next. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And it's with my sun and moon design on there. I love this so, so much. This one's a bit on the bigger end of a key ring. I think I prefer something more this size. But then again, I do have key rings this big. So I think that this is fine. I think that's all the new designs, I'm pretty sure. But I'll have a look at the other ones underneath. There's 50 of each design. So I did 50 pins and 50 key rings of each design as well. So I think there's about 700 pieces here, which is really great. Uh, we've got the key ring. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. All right, so we've got the new koala design and I don't really love it. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's just my first impressions. Maybe because those ones are so magical. I think it's just a bit muted for what I was expecting. The colors have muted out quite a lot. I mean, it was a very muty pastel -y look, but it does feel like it's very heavy on the black. I still like it though. It's just not what I was hoping for. Okay, I got new colors of the wombat, so hopefully these ones are okay. Yeah, these ones are great. Actually, you know what? I have a feeling the supplier has actually changed the colors a little bit because these are different. These are like similar, but the brown, I didn't change and it's a different color. So maybe that's where I've gone wrong. Actually, let me look at the pin versions because it looks like, I feel like they've changed it slightly because the back, the outline is a lot thicker than the original one. Let me get my old pins. Yeah, they, they have changed. They have changed the item. Uh, the outline is a lot thicker compared to my old pins. And I think that that's why I've had the reaction I've had is because it is a lot more black. Oh, I forgot there's one more design. So that's a bit of a bummer with the Aussie animals. I mean, they're still sellable and I don't think that it is, it's not like it's a defect or anything. It's just an aesthetic look. I am going to contact the supplier about and send them photos because it's clear that they have kind of changed and it would have been nice to know that before I reordered it with them. But there is one more design in here that I haven't seen yet and I actually forgot I ordered it until I started digging in here. It looks great. And I think the, the show of the day 
has actually been these hard enamels. I think that next time, I think I'm just gonna go hard enamel. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I turned the mushroom house into a little pin and key ring. Goodness, they're so magical. I love all of these. They're so good. I am so happy with all these hard enamel pieces, but yeah, I am a little bit disappointed that they've changed the line weight on these ones, but they're still cool. They're still cool. They're just not what I was expecting. They've really changed the aesthetic of them by making the lines so much thicker. All right, I just grabbed the possum out because that has not changed since my last order, and I think their colors have changed. So you can see here, I'll do a close-up picture, the colors have totally changed. Um, so that's why that one looks so much darker than what I thought because they are really dark in color. So I contacted the supplier and they actually let me know that halfway through my batch, the enamel product was changed. They thought it wasn't significant enough for me to notice, but they offered to replace them with the hard enamel versions due to the difference in supply and all the pins. So I'm just showing the before pins and the replacements with the brighter colors next to them. You might not be able to tell. I, I can definitely tell. And I just wanted to keep it consistent across all my products. I don't want someone getting one that's not as bright and expecting it to be super bright. I ended up just paying the difference from the soft enamel to the hard enamel so I'm so grateful. I will have the imperfect ones a little cheaper because they are still cute and I, I, I know that they're not the ideal colors but I don't want them to be a waste but I just couldn't I just didn't have the heart to sell them online if there was just so much variation and no consistency there so I'm so glad I have the replacements that properly reflect the Pantone colors I requested. Even though it's October and the market isn't until November we are wrapping up the last bits of the pouring. We smashed out all the pouring early on so so that we could have all the artworks dried and ready to go for painting and firing so we can constantly be painting, glazing, progressing them all on and starting to pack them up. Once we did the last pour for the year, which is so wild, the year, I did a big cleanup of my slip casting table and trough. The table will be used for painting and glazing moving forward so that I can set up little stations of painting so we can progress on all these different artworks at different times. And now that I've got two studio assistants, which I'm so, so grateful for, we can all just help get little bits of detail and pieces ready for the kiln fire. I just want to take a moment for my trough because it is the best. My partner bought this tub from eBay and added a plumbing fitting at the bottom to drain into a bucket. He then made this lip rack that is made from dowels and it fits over the trough so it can be pulled apart and cleaned to make sure nothing gets dry and dusty. He also built this whole table thing and it's on wheels so it locks into place and slots perfectly under the table. The wheels on the base can be moved and locked like my table so it can move out of the way for mopping and move around the studio wherever I feel like it should go. I just love it so much and it's going to allow me to be able to do the bigger molds more often too without the chaos and mess but it allows us to pour so many more molds at one time. It's just been the best and I love it so much and I just wanted to share it in case you want some ideas for your slip casting trough. It is really cool. I am very excited. This box has just arrived and it has something inside that's going to help the next market out so, so much. I just wanted to preface it. This is gifted, but it is an upgrade from something that I was already using at my market stand and the brand saw it and wanted to help me out by gifting me one of these. And I also really wanted to share because it is especially helpful for those of you who are maybe starting your venture into small business, are a small business, want to start attending markets and want to be able to take payments anytime, anywhere, which I think is such a valuable asset of this product is that literally anytime, anywhere, you can just turn this on and you can take a payment and it's just fantastic. Let's open it up. I was using the small square readers at the last market and they are so, so fabulous. But I found I was like always leaning over the table and I always had my phone and then I couldn't take any content. So this way I'm going to be able to have it somewhat separate to my phone. This is the next level up, which is the square terminal. Actually, I'll show you how it actually all works and how I stock take everything. This time I'm actually going to properly stock take so that we don't have any surprises in the tubs at the end of the market 
and I kind of ran out of time last time because I was like, oh, I should stop take just to make sure. But this time I'm probably going to stop take. So that is just putting in, for example, um, cow milk jugs black and then just putting in how many we've got of each one. So that if someone's asking for something and we're like, oh no, we're sold out, we can just double check and make sure that they're actually sold out and not hiding underneath the top. I am so excited because this is going to be a game changer this market. All right, don't mind my mess at the desk. I am going on to my Square website now. So not my website website, but the Square where it connects with that terminal I got. And I'm going to go through, and before I pack each thing, I'm going to put in the exact stock I have of everything and make sure that I've made everything accountable. And then I'll have an exact number. And also if we sell something out, I'm gonna know if we've got more of them. So I'm gonna go do that now. I'm gonna do the wattle designs first, and then I'm gonna price everything on the bases and then pack them up ready for finders. I am actually gonna do this staggered for the next month month over November so that when we get to the last week we can just focus on getting as much done as possible and we're not just trying to get everything packed most of it should be packed by the time we're ready to go so that is the plan put it in here price it wrap it up pack it up and then it should be good to go I really like it because it's really really easy so I just put the item in and you can categorize it. So on the square, for example, I've got curved belly mugs, but it actually falls under the category of just mugs. So you can actually in like in a rush of doing a sale, you can just quickly type in mug and it will give you all the mug selections. I've got eight there. So I'm just gonna pop in eight and save. And then when you go into here, it should actually have that. We've got eight available. So I'm gonna go through and do that for all of them. Um, yeah, very easy, very simple, and it's just going to save us a lot of time when we're at the market, knowing that we've got, yeah, knowing exactly what we've got, if anything's hiding. Um, also, because there's going to be more of us at the stand this time, there's going to be an extra person. Knowing what each person has sold is going to be really helpful because you can only keep track of what you've sold. So that's going to be good. And also a better gauge of what mugs are more popular earlier on. So we can actually go through and yeah, I like that part because there's like the statistics at the end of each day, which I can actually show you when we're at the market, but it shows you the different items that were more profitable or uh, what sold early on, um, how much like stickers and magnets we sold. Very interesting and it's really just a good insight into what to take to another market. Yeah, we're constantly just doing heaps of glazing and I also prepared a lot of stilts for a piece I'm putting in this year's advent calendar. One of you suggested that adding some wax to the stilts will help them repel and not leave the little black marks on the pottery. So I can confirm the wax works really well they did have a little bit of the black on them still but I got a Dremel where I've been sort of taking the rest off safely outside of the studio with a mask on of course and it, it works so great so I just wanted to share that feedback and thank you this is why I love you guys I'm always learning so much new about pottery like when I think I know a lot you guys come through and give me some new cool hacks here is that cottage design coming out of the kiln with some ladybugs, some mushies, a few other little sneak sorts coming to the market. There is just so much happening. I was editing this vlog and I was just like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> like it's gone. The monthly vlogs are a little bit trickier because after a week, like it's still very, very fresh and you know what you've done. But then I was looking back through the footage and I was like, oh, why did I film that? <laughs> I was like, what, what was that for? Like what, a, what was the story in the context of that? So it's probably a little bit of a non-storyline one again, where it's just a bunch of different stuff happening all the time. And that's where my brain's been at. I have apologize so many times to my studio assistants because I'm like sorry I have so much going on in there that I am miscommunicating and not being the best and then uh, this happened okay so there is this bingo card of mistakes you make as a ceramicist or a potter 
and there was one thing that I've never done and I was so proud of myself for never doing it and it's finally happened and I'm kind of sad but it was bound to eventually happen I just done so well for so long not to have it happen and that is I set my kiln to the wrong temperature I didn't film opening the kiln because it was just an ordinary bisque firing but essentially what I've done is I fired the bisque pieces to a glaze firing temperature which is so much hotter than what it needs to be it is fine it has not melted or ruined the pieces it kind of has in a way but what essentially happens is I've done the full firing straight away so it's taken out all the moisture it's sucked out all of the porousness left in the clay so now it's really tricky to adhere glaze to it was just essentially trying to pull them all out make sure that they hadn't stuck Got it? Yeah, come on. Do you want to grab that top one off? Oh, there we go. And then I read that dipping them in glaze straight away whilst they were still hot allows the glaze to stick and the water component to steam off. So it was it was just like high pressure intense work and that's why I didn't really feel much of it. Was able to save a lot of pieces. I got them out of the kiln using that method. They seem fine. There were a few pieces though that are not as great. Um, just the finish of them isn't as nice. It's probably hard to see on the camera. I'll have to show a close up. But it just kind of looks more satiny, which is cool. But there's spots where it is really glazy, like glossy like, and you can see droops and runs because the glaze is just like not being compatible to the porous clay. We only had a few pieces in there that were finished and needing glaze firing that had all the paint on them. But there were a few pieces that were just plain and we hadn't actually like painted anything on them yet. We hadn't glazed them, we hadn't done anything to them yet, except for just trying to lock them in place. And so I've got like a lot of these like quads with thimbles because I decided to make more after seeing how popular they were. And I'm thinking that by adding the underglaze on top, it will have like a chalky textured base that will hopefully help the glaze adhere to it. I just opened up the kiln and uh, one of my shoe assistants was watching me open the kiln and she literally watched my face drop. And I was like, oh no, something's gone wrong here. Like I knew straight away because the color of the clay was just different. It usually has like a pink tinge to it, but that is full on ceramic. I knew straight away what had happened. The finish isn't the best. They are going to have to be discounted pieces and I am going to have to sell them as seconds, which sucks, but at least they aren't a waste. My biggest thing is wasting and I really just want to make sure that whenever I'm making art, whenever I'm making pieces that I'm making them to last, and I'm making them to be enjoyed for years to come and I'm not just sort of producing more waste in this world and that is why I started pottery in the first place because it just has such a nice use and a sustainable product in a way. It is one of the most sustainable mediums yet the most unsustainable because it never breaks down. So that's why it's so important that when you are doing pottery that you're really committed to what you're doing and what you're making and that you're really proud of it and you know that it is going to be something that is going to be loved and cherished for years and years and years because it will outlive us. When something like this happens, I am a bit hard on myself because I, in a way, mistakes happen, but in a way I worry that those pieces are wasted and I've just contributed to a very bad waste system. But at the end of the day, like it just, it, it happens and it's okay. It's all just uncharted territory and I'm just, at the moment, it's trying to save them and also trying not to spend any more time on them. That is the other thing is that mis when mistakes happen, they take up time to fix them and it's trying to avoid mistakes where we can, but sometimes they're unavoidable. So anyway. Yeah, so that happened. <laughs> oh my gosh. I still am traumatized from that kiln firing. I am getting up at 10 p.m. at night to double check that I haven't popped my kiln on the wrong temperature. It has literally, done something to my brain <laughs> i can confirm we have been able to save some of the pieces from that but i can't share them yet until um a later date <laughs> but they they turned out they turned out okay they're not the best but they're a bit more like of a matte 
finish. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy with how they were looking in the end and we didn't lose them all. But yeah, that's a little bit of what went on this month. You probably saw a lot of what I worked on in the mystery molds throughout the month. Um, but this is just sort of a feature of what wasn't in those videos. I got ready for the next week by popping it all out on that table now that we're not using it for slip casting. And here is a wrap up of what I have photographed and wrapped up for the market already. This is not a tally of what is actually finished. There's a whole shelf finished of finished stuff. I think we're sitting on about 400 artworks at the moment, but this is what I've actually packed and what is ready to go and ready to come and get packed in the car and come to Sydney. I want to say another thank you so much. I love saying thank you to you because I, every week you guys just show up and support me so much. And yeah, I just wouldn't have this without you. I, I know that I put a lot of work into it, but it's the support of you that allows me to keep doing these vlogs, allows me to keep living the dream of doing these pottery artworks so that you get to enjoy them in your home. I hope you enjoyed this October vlog. In the November vlog, it will be the final crunch to get the pieces finished for the market. So it'll probably end up being about 200 to 300 more artworks that I'm hoping to get through. I am sending off all my annual advent calendar release. I go on a plane for a collaboration that I mentioned before and we pack up and get ready for the market. I hope to see you there and as always thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this and to show your support. I'll see you next time. Just for